Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here, how's everybody doing? Hope you're doing well. I'm great. Got a little flower popping out here on the cactus. When the cactus flower with these tiny little flowers. Speaking of cactus flowers, we pot some slumbageras. Butchered that. Schlumberge schlumber holiday cactus. Let's do it. We'll figure a word I never have a problem saying as soon as I turn on the camera. Can't say it. I have a whole bunch of these holiday cactus here and I should just preface what I'm talking about in this video is gonna to apply to the schlumbagera truncatas, which is the Thanksgiving cactus or holiday cactus, as well as the Christmas cactus and the Easter cactus. So what I'm doing here, you can do with everything. At least with those three. Here's what I have here. I have three just regular holiday cactus that I picked up from, I think Lowe's or Home Depot back during the holidays, hence why they have the foil on them. I popped a hole in the bottom so that they had better drainage. They don't want those sitting in water. They'll just rot and die. And then I have these three variegated Schlumbageras over here. I'm gonna be potting them up all together. I've realized that I have talked about holiday cactus and a lot of different videos here on the channel, but never gone over repotting. I've talked about repotting them before, but haven't done it in a video. And these are plants where potting them up really isn't all that complicated. They can really usually be grown just fine in a standard potting mix, though that's not how I like to do it. There are some risks that come with that because they are more prone to root rot if they don't have a mix that drains really, really well. I wasn't sure if this is even a video to make because the Thanksgiving cactus, all the schlumbageras, they aren't plants that need to be repotted all that often. They generally are pretty good with a nice tight root space. I wanted to get these repotted, mostly just that they're all together in one container. And because a lot of what goes on with the type of mix that I use for them has to do with how I grow my plants. And that's something to think about whenever you repot your plants. There can be a generalization of what the plant needs, but you also have to remember what's your growing style? What's your climate like? There are variabilities to keep in mind. Tropical cactus, not a desert type cactus. These grow more like an epiphyllum wood, or think of some types of orchids. Where they're dispersed in nature, they would be along like rocky cliff sides, perhaps in like the various nooks and crannies within very large trees as well, but they're going to be in areas where a lot of leaf litter falls and collects around the bases of the plants, and there's a good amount of moisture and humidity. So anytime I'm growing a plant that has those characteristics, I think of aeroids, I think of orchids. It's going to want something that will hold on to some moisture around the roots, but also something that is light and airy, it has a good amount of airflow, something that's oxygen rich. That's the basics of what that cactus is going to need. And like I said, you can use an all-purpose potting mix if you really want to. Just gonna have to be more careful about how you water the plant. Maybe use a more shallow container. So what I like to do for them is pretty similar to an aeroid mix. This is bark chip, perlite, pumice, sand. There is a small amount of sphagnum moss in here, long fiber sphagnum moss. That's gonna help hold on to some moisture. And uh, there's a good amount of uh, just standard cactus mix, which is just basically potting mix that has some more bark in it and very fine sand. Sand and gravel got somewhat buried by the bark chips in here, but you can see it more along the edge. This is stuff that I actually, I pulled out of an aquarium and it's dried out. It's good stuff, has a lot of nutrients in it. I like to get grit into my mixes, something with some more texture to it, something that is going to possibly be more reminiscent of a plant hanging out on a cliffside where there's various types of debris falling and collecting around the roots of those plants. That's why there's gravel, sand, all that fun stuff in here. I'm gonna mix this up, let it get nice and moist because you saw that moss is pretty dry, and then go ahead and get them popped into a basket. Talk a little bit more about repotting them then. I'm thinking these are going to be much happier in a nice fresh mix that has some chunkiness to it so that some air can get in around those roots. That's just, that's disgusting what they're in right now. You go see, I have three of them all put together, have some gaps around them. There's about maybe a half inch gap on the outside. So this isn't really all that drastic of an upgrade for them, but it is plenty. I'll go ahead, backfill this, repot the variegated ones, and then talk a little bit more about time of year and fertilizing, all that fun stuff. I'm only loosening these up for the sake of making space because they're all being put together 
into the smaller six inch containers. They're much smaller plants. They don't need a larger pot like the other ones did when they got grouped together. But I'm going through there very gently and being very careful and making sure to not disturb those roots any more than necessary. When possible, if you're putting a whole bunch into one pot here, try and get the taller growth to the middle and the shorter growth to the outside. That way the smaller growth doesn't become uh, strangled out or it's not gonna miss out on light. Allow them to grow up this way and then bush out down the sides of the container. There we go. That is much better. Vast improvement. It's less containers to have to take care of. These have to do some reestablishing. This one right here. That's going to take time. So uh, that's generally why I like to do my repots with these plants, usually between uh, late February into June. And that's just largely because of where I live. That gives them time to uh, have a cooler season where it's not really, really hot outside. They get repotted. You repot them when it's really hot out, then they have more trouble taking in moisture. And that would be really bad when I've had to remove so much gunk <laughs> was what it was but roots and gunk from around the roots of this one over here not as many roots not as many resources to pull water up to the foliage of the plant so have to keep that in mind repotting i generally like to do regardless of whether you have to tear the roots up on these or not late winter to early summer sometime in there just not when it's really hot outside the earlier the better though because that gives them time to go ahead and re-establish themselves and rebuild themselves into a nice strong looking plant that will go ahead and hopefully bloom and look beautiful just what 10 months down the road not even i haven't watered them in yet i will when i'm not surrounded by lights and cameras and electronics usually wait till after i'm done filming to water the plants in but that is an important step help get the air bubbles out of the potting mix helps settle things down and make sure there's moisture available to the plants where you potentially disturb some of their roots. Stress them out. You don't want to stress out a plant and then make it thirsty or stress out a plant that was already thirsty. That's never good either. And then how do we know when it's time to repot these plants? It can be tricky. They can stay in the same container for years and look completely fine. And you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? You saw why I repotted this one. That soil blend was just garbage. And for me, aesthetically, and just with the way I grow my plants, it makes a lot more sense for them to be grouped together because it's just less things have spread around outside to take care of. They're likely in those little pots to get knocked around, fall behind something. These are nice and bulky. These aren't gonna go anywhere and uh, it's going to be easier to be like, okay, I just need to water this one and now that one and not have to stay on top of watering six smaller containers. It was just an ease of maintenance thing. General rule of thumb with house plants is when you start to see roots coming up the bottom, coming out the top, you water the plant, it's not responding, then that means it's time to repot the plant or you're fertilizing and you're still having nitrogen deficiencies, probably time to repot the plant. That's a rule of thumb that is only kind of useful with these cactus. Man, the variegated ones are hard to get to show up on camera with all the lights in here. I have to bring it closer so you can see how nice the foliage looks on those. And this is nice and full. You give that probably two or three years. That's going to be absolutely stunning. It's going to take it it's definitely going to take it some time though. Because these are such sturdy and resilient plants, you're not always going to notice the symptoms like nitrogen deficiencies. By the time those show, things might already be pretty bad with the plant. More than likely, if there's something going wrong with the plant, it needs to be repotted. That's going to be related to the soil holding way too much moisture. That's going to be an overall yellowing. Heads looking flat and kind of squishy. You get a yellowish hue to them. You can stick your finger down the soil and see if it's wet and think about when the last time you watered the plant was and should it still be wet? Probably not. There might be an odor. Hopefully there's not because that's a whole nother set of issues going on there. If that's the case, get out of the container, get all that old soil out, wash it clean, maybe spray it down, not maybe, definitely spray it down with some peroxide if there's an odor, let it sit for a few minutes, rinse it back off and get it repotted into a mix that drains more freely. Don't let them sit in water. They don't like that, even though they are a tropical cactus and it's good to go ahead and water them just like you would a standard house plant where you let the soil dry out, you know, maybe an inch to two inches down. Should be okay, depending on the temperatures. Heck, certain times of the year, I'll let these dry out completely. If it's really cool, if it's in the 60s in the grow space, then I'm not worried about watering these very often at all. Maybe once every few weeks. It's generally not the case for most of us though, right? probably in your house where temperatures are usually in the 70s Fahrenheit for a lot of people. If that's the case, you probably have to water them every other week to maybe once a month during the winter time. Depends on your light exposure, those sorts of things. Plants aren't blooming, but you're doing everything for them that you should be doing, meaning that you're changing their day lengths and 
they're being fed appropriately, fed appropriately. Proper minerals are being provided to the plant to keep it healthy, but things just aren't doing what they're supposed to do. Might be time to repot it. I wouldn't be surprised though if I have these in these containers here for about five years, maybe even longer. I shouldn't do that because I know good and well as a gardener, as most of us do, that eventually whatever is beneficial inside this potting soil is going to wear out over time. It's going to get flushed out from inside there over years of the plants being watered. The roots are going to fill out the container more and there's going to be more soil loss where eventually there's going to be more root than soil. And worst case scenario, time will pass and the soil blend that's in there will start to compact and get muddy and it'll end up looking just like it was before I repotted it. Wouldn't want that to be the case either. I don't think these would have lasted through the summertime in that mix that those were in when I moved them outside. Those would have just rotted away. Yep, so there it is. Quick rundown. The majority of people who are watching this are probably only wondering if they even need to repot it. So maybe this was helpful. Chances are you don't, but if you lift it out of the container, have a look at those roots and at the soil, you don't like what you see, then go ahead and repot the plant. Don't wait until the next season. If you're thinking, uh-oh, it's September, I don't want to repot the plant right now, you have to weigh things out, right? Is it going to mean that the plant might rot and die if you don't? Then maybe just forfeit some blooms. And even though we call them the Thanksgiving holiday cactus, I've had these things bloom for me year round before. Just generally the biggest show is when there's a change in season, when the day lengths change, they get more darkness, more hours of dark than light. Then they put on a big show. Go ahead and repot it and it, move it into the dark in the springtime. You can have your show during the summer. Nothing wrong with that, that's fine too. Well, multiple times a year for you, but if you don't repot it when it's in some kind of muddy gunk like that one was, then you won't even have a plant to get blooming. So I'd say just, just do it. A well-drained all-purpose houseplant mix is fine. Just something that has some perlite in it. You squeeze it together, don't want it to hold together. My blend, honestly, probably overly complicated, not something you necessarily need to do. You can grab some just palm and cactus mix from your local nursery they'd be fine in that too. A lot of it goes back to your climate, to your growing style, and how you're keeping your plants. You live in a really humid environment, and these are gonna be getting a lot of precipitation, then the more drainage, the better. If you tend to underwater your plants and live in a pretty dry climate, maybe don't worry about it being something that dries very, very quickly, right? That's only something I have to worry about because of the rain. Might not be the case for you. I'll consider adding an all-purpose slow-release fertilizer to these probably sometime around midsummer. Until then, my focus is more on getting them reestablished into these containers, which is one of the reasons that I have that gravel and sand that I pulled out of an old aquarium. There's lots of good gunk in there that's going to help feed all the microbes around those roots and help get things reestablished in the containers. And then using a fertilizer, dilute it because these do have more sensitive structures within their roots. They tend to freak out sometimes if you use a full strength fertilizer on them. Diluted fertilizer meant for establishing a plant Maybe not a bad idea, just one or two treatments with that and then resume as normal. They're pretty sturdy, shouldn't give you trouble. Comment down below, what's your experience with them? Any tips, tricks, suggestions, always appreciated. Favorite color varieties, older yours. Some people have had these for decades. They've passed them through many generations of their families. I always love hearing those stories. Okay, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye-bye.